first ministry to aggressively implement security reforms. Police officers receive scientific and technical skills training and low-income earners to benefit from 7% reduction in paint prices. Weekly Digest is a government information agency program that keeps you up to date on what government has been doing to better the lives of all Guyanese. With the details, I'm Suel Finley-Williams. The Home Affairs Ministry is moving aggressively to implement the reforms outlined in the sector strategic plan. Recently, a consultancy contract valued 25 million Ghana dollars with the UK-based Capital Simons firm was signed. On behalf of the government of Guyana, I'm very pleased that we have started uh, taking initiatives to implement measures that will lead to the modernization of the Guyana police force. The people of Guyana must be the principal beneficiaries of these initiatives. The signing of this contract has jump-started the reforms for the Guyana police force. It is expected to last for a duration of six weeks and will focus on areas which include administration, succession planning, integrity and public relations. I'm delighted to be here today uh, to support something that I think is very valuable for the future development of Guyana and something that I hope will get cross-party support in its implementation uh, here in Guyana. Capita Simmons is no stranger to the force, as the firm's relationship with the law enforcement agency dates back to 2000. This consultancy firm has also had a strong presence in the region over the years, having worked with the Jamaican Constabulary and CARICOM. We've had some very good experiences here over the last few years. We did some work in 2000 looking at how the force may develop in the future. And then we were back here a few years back and did a major project to look at the strategic plan, which we're delighted to hear has been accepted um, by the GPF and the, and the ministers. So we see ourselves here as continuing now with implementation to actually make a change um, that is difficult in any organisation. It will be difficult in this particular project as well, but it's certainly something that's capable of being achieved. The strategic plan was drawn up by the Capital Simmons firm back in 2010. Guyana has welcomed the decision by the European Parliament to extend the sugar quota to 2020 after the existing arrangement for it to end in 2015 was changed. There has been extensive lobbying by Guyana and the Caribbean to extend the sugar quota. The decision taken by the European Union to extend has been viewed as a good development by Agriculture Minister and other governmental organizations in the Caribbean. We believe that the period of time for the industries to reorient themselves was not enough and that the mechanization and modernization of the sugar industry will take much longer than the period being given to us. The Economic Partnership Agreement, the EPA, launched in 1973, initially stated that the sugar protocol was indefinite. It was to compensate countries such as Guyana, which for hundreds of years, as a colony, supported the economies of developed countries. In 2005-2006, this EPA was revised and resulted in a drop of 36% in the price of sugar supplied from ACP countries. We therefore have shown by our resoluteness that we were correct in expending the energies we did to have the Europeans consider an extension of the quota arrangement. We believe the Europeans are reasonable people and they would understand the arguments. Former President Barajag Jagdeo and the government led a similar lobbying effort for the renegotiation of the economic partnership. As a result of the former head of state's effort, the Europeans agree that the EPA will not subsume the Treaty of Chagaramas and the EPA will be subjected to periodic reviews that are coming up. The hinterland water strategy is a critical factor for safe water in communities and in the reduction of poverty in the hinterland with government continuing to ensure that pure, safe water is available to communities. Many communities across the hinterland have upgraded their water supply sources. 
Watering holes have been upgraded to hand and bore wells and also to solar water systems. The majority of hinterland communities now have the available infrastructure that offers more improved access to safe water. However, there have been challenges in some areas. When the, the contract for the water project is, is awarded and work begins, um, some of the areas um, pose great difficulty with respect to drilling. And, uh, and there's a sheet rock somewhere under, underneath that sometimes they encounter and they will have to, d that delays um, the, the project. And also there are the, the maintenance of, the, of those that are on the ground already and offering the service. Um, maintenance is a key and critical um, ingredient in, in the success of sustaining any infrastructure. So therefore the water likewise need to be, main the water um, infrastructure need to be maintained. And while they have trained community maintenance um, technicians, um, there are times when greater issues develop. When these issues develop that cannot be handled by technicians, they are usually channeled to the Ministry of Housing and Water, GWI. Some concerns were raised with respect to the functioning of the new infrastructure in terms of them not working and operating properly. We are happy to see that the, um, the matrix sent by GWI, that they have addressed almost all of the issues. Um, that we have reported to them. I, I would really like to share that list with you also because um, it, is, it is available. And, and this shows where um, sometimes a complaint comes to the ministry. Um, we cannot resolve it from our end because it depends on another sector. And sometimes the issue comes at a time when it is least expected and there is, it's not budgeted for. So any delay in addressing the problem relies heavily on the ability of the sector to source the funding um, because it might be out of budget um, required, out, you know, required monies that were not budgeted for because these are breakages um, and or maybe the breakages in an amount that the maintenance allocation um, is, 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 is larger than what the allocation has. The Hinterland Water Program has advanced to 41% and is progressing well with 71% of the residents now having access to potable water. Government has expended over the past six years $700 million in improving Hinterland water supply. The Linen Commission of Inquiry, COI, set up by President Donald Ramatar, has resumed hearings after adjourning in November 2012. Appearing before the Commission were persons seeking compensation for injuries and losses due to the circumstances surrounding the July 18th incident. The orchestrated street protests were held against the increased electricity tariffs for the residents of Linden. Mariabo Investment Inc., a logging and sawmilling enterprise operating at Mabura Hill, Upper Demerara, supported a claim of over $4,000 U.S. for a shipment of Greenheart logs being transported out of the area. So that's $230 U.S. per meter, is that it? Per cubic meter. Per yeah. cubic meter. <laughs> That's the going rate or something? Yes, it is. The wholesale rate? Uh -huh. I don't, we don't wholesale log. We, you can say retail. Uh, it has different price. If you're exporting, your price will be higher, but this is a local. So the, you would sell this to? Oh. To the local sawmills, yeah. And that's the price that you would yeah. get from them? Yes. A claim was also supported for the replacement of the Lynn Mine Secretariat, which was destroyed by fire during the protests. Various other individuals also appeared to present testimony to support their claims. Some of the statements made before the commission, however, appeared very unrealistic. I don't understand your mathematics. You said you lost income for 13 weeks at three thousand dollars per day and you say that is equal to ninety one thousand dollars yes sir i don't understand that mathematics oh 
how you get it, how you get it to the 91. Now me do the calculations, sir. You see, I believe 13 into 91 is 7. So is it that you really make $7,000 per week and not $3,000 per day? Yes, sir. That's the truth. Yes, sir. Representing the People's Progressive Party Civic Compton Fraser, PPPC organizer for Region 10, testified before the Commission on the losses incurred at the party office in Linden and damage to the building during the unrest. A total of $2.5 million in losses is being claimed. Meanwhile, relatives of the three persons killed on July 18, 2012 during the protests also appeared before the Commission of Inquiry to support their claims for compensation for the deaths. There is more of the Weekly Digest after these messages. Community development plans will serve as a springboard for advancing Amerindian development. With the signing of the agreement with the United Nations Development Fund for the release of the GRIFT funds, soon 27 communities will begin implementation of their plans, with most of them focusing on various aspects of farming. The East Bank Damarara is undergoing significant transformation as the drive to ensure that Guyanese own their own homes continue. The Housing Ministry's vision is to distribute 30,000 house lots on that corridor alone within the next five years. Preparations are on the way for another phase of the hinterland electrification program, even as 11,000 solar panels were distributed last year. The government's vision is to ensure that every hinterland household has access to electricity within five years. The children cared for by the Ministry of Human Services at the Mahaika Children's Home will soon have a new home and new furnishings. The construction of the new Mahaika Children's Home is 60% complete. Minister Jennifer Webster visited the construction site to see how work was coming along. Construction of the home is a collaboration between the ministry and mobile giant Digicel. The new home will be furnished by Digicel and will include girls and boys dormitories, bathrooms, a laundry room, study room, recreational room, kitchen, nursery, dining room, office and caretakers quarters. Many of the children here are abused and uh, um, this particular project, um, which is the first of its kind, um, we're hoping to upgrade the facilities of, of children's homes and to have uh, the homes operate within certain standards. So um, we've started this um, particular project and we must give thanks to um, our sponsors, Digicel, for, for coming up and uh, conceptualizing with us this initiative. Demolition of the old building will be done subsequent to the completion of the new one. The ministry plans to make a few other additional changes as well. We are also going to be looking at um, improving the quality of care um, that our children currently receive um, in terms of having um, care more caregivers and um, having a more rounded um, facility where we will provide them with other opportunities, educational, etc. They all attend school. However, we're hoping to have some extracurricular activities um, when they are housed in this facility. Approximately six children are currently cared for by the Mahaika Children's Home. The minister noted that members of a visiting committee have begun visiting other children's homes to see whether they are meeting the ministry's minimum standards. If homes fail to meet the recommendations of the ministry, they face possible closure. Twenty police officers were trained in scientific and technical skills through a collaborative effort of the Embassy of the French Republic and the Ghana Police Force. This program, which is the second of its kind in Guyana, sought to equip ranks with necessary knowledge and skills to effectively conduct crime scene investigations. Last year, a similar program was conducted where more than two dozen officers were trained. This is a timely 
intervention for us so that our young detective, our crime scene personnel, to have this training. I must call on the participants to pay keen attention to what is going to be imparted to you. Ask questions. Ask for best practices that is being used locally and internationally. So that when you return to your place of work, you would not make simple mistakes. The actual training was conducted by two officials from the French Interdepartmental Anti-Drug Training Center, CIFAD, based in Martinique. This is a prominent organization that has conducted similar programs throughout the Caribbean and South America. This program is welcome for the fact that we in Guyana are faced with a few challenging crimes at present. And this training is part of an ongoing ongoing training program which is being conducted by the Guyana Police Force. This year, training will be a priority for ranks of the police force and the Ministry of Home Affairs has submitted a draft budget in which it is proposed that a sizable chunk be allocated for this purpose. From this year, it will be made mandatory that ranks from the level of constable to assistant commissioner be sent abroad for overseas training, even as the way has now opened up for ranks from the force as well as the prison services and the Guyana Fire Service to pursue academic studies at the University of Guyana and other institutions of higher learning at home and abroad without losing any benefits and entitlements. The Housing Ministry's unwavering commitment to make home ownership affordable for all Guyanese saw the forging of yet another public-private partnership, this time with Harris Payne's Guyana Limited. This agreement will see low and low and middle income earners staff of the ministry and contractors who are working on the turnkey houses, benefiting from a price discount of 7% on paints. I'm very happy once again to be associated with another activity that embraces the Central Housing and Planning Authority focus on development through partnership, embracing our approach towards seeking the best prices and the best <clears throat> housing solution, solutions, especially for low-income earners. A number of the allottees have been uh, reporting how great this partnership has been for them in ensuring that they benefit from some preferential prices and that, uh, that they are able to construct their homes uh, with greater savings to them. Government has been making significant efforts to foster more and more partnerships of this type particularly in the areas of housing development, which is one of the most important aspects of national life. This work that they're doing for the Guyanese people, we wanted to support that. And what we've done is we've given an offer of discounted paint to the land allottees to help them to afford to complete their personal projects, their housing, um, into the home that they're probably dreaming about. This agreement will be valid for a period of one year after which it is expected to be extended by the paint company. The ministry has developed similar successful relationships with Tulsi Passat Limited and National Hardware. This year, the Ministry of Natural Resources and the Environment will place emphasis on the enforcement of environmental laws and policies and the compliance as it seeks to expand the sector. Despite outstanding successes in 2012, the Natural Resources Ministry views as important the need for more strengthening of efforts at enforcement and compliance as the sector expands. We want to see an expanding mining sector. We want to see a much more efficient mining sector. We want to see a much more technologically advanced mining sector, but at the same time, 
we want to have a mining sector that, uh, that subscribes to the three pillars that we've always talked about in the natural resources sector. That is one, yes, it must make business sense, but at the same time, we must look at our social as well as our environmental responsibilities. Minister Robert Passard noted that while many stakeholders and organizations such as the Ghana Golden Diamond Miners Association and the Ghana Women Miners Organization have committed themselves to assisting in efforts at reducing illegal activities, political stakeholders also have a role to play. And I want to appeal to our political stakeholders that if we are committed to the development of our natural, national patrimony in a manner that all of us will be proud of, not only for today, but for the next 20 years and beyond, it requires that firm commitment that we will not allow the violation, that we will not allow any of our regulations to be compromised, whether or not it is our constituents. Political allegiance, he said, is no passport to lawlessness. The Education Ministry is set to stage its annual children's mastermind competitions under the theme Reflecting Creativity, Embracing Diversity. Competitions at the regional level have already begun. Thus far, Region 2 has completed theirs. Region 1, 3, 4 and 10 are scheduled to complete their rounds of the competition shortly. The Ministry of Education is in the process of um, conducting the children's MASH activities, especially the activities at the regional level. They've all begun. Um, they've started in Region 2 on the 21st of January, and we will conclude in Region 6 on the 8th of February. Um, those activities are going quite well um, from all re reports that we've got. These students will meet in Georgetown for the final slated for February 13th to 15th at the National Culture Center, where participants will have a chance to complete in areas such as dance and masquerade for primary and secondary schools. That category is followed by Calypso and Dramatic Poetry on February 14th, Choir's Presentation Salute to Guyana on February 15th, and on February 16th, the much-anticipated Costume Parade. For the parade, we've got various categories. We've got the nursery bands, primary bands, secondary bands, um, bands from children's organizations, we, and, and we have regional bands. We have a special category for individuals, and this is where if you've got a child and the child would like to participate, participate in the parade, but the school is not coming, then all you've got to do is to get a costume for the child and enter them into the parade. Additionally, there will be an essay competition for school children and young people who have completed schools. This competition will be held under the theme, The Role of Youth in Nation Building. All entries must be um, typewritten and submitted to the MASH Secretariat no later than February 15th. Um, we have quite a number of good prizes for the essay competition, for the juniors. Um, the total of the, the prizes and trophy amongst the 100 for, this, for the um, first place, second place, 70,000, and third place, 30,000. But for the juniors, you will have that um, cash value. But for the juniors, we're giving um, gift certificates and also they'll be having prizes of laptops and Kindles and um, iPods to the value of the amount that I've called. So we're inviting all the young um, people out there, um, the children from schools, um, any children's organization, and the young people in the community to send your entries in for um, the essay competition. The costume parade will be fully sponsored by Guyana Telegraph and telephone company GTT. GBTI has also pledged its support for 500,000 for trophies, especially in the regions they are located. While these annual competitions are being held in observance of Guyana's 43 Republic anniversary, 
They aid the promotion of expressive art and artistic education in the school system, which as a result make the students well-rounded. The Ministry of Culture, Youth and Sport formally launched the National Theatre Art School and will soon offer a diploma program in theatre studies. The program officially begins on February 4 with 18 students. In the first year, students are required to take all the courses offered and will be awarded a certificate. And during the second year, they will select a subject to major and minor in, for which they will be given a diploma which allows them at another level to secure an associate degree in theater arts. We feel very proud in this ministry that we are able to now create this theater school. We, on our end, we would invest resources into the school and we want uh, persons to come to us um, to work with us to ensure that this school is going to be a success. I know we are starting in a very small way, but sometimes it's better to start small and you grow. And I think um, over time we'll be able to see uh, whether what we started out here today in such a small measure, whether you know, it would blossom into something that would be good for this country. This initiative complements a number of programs that the ministry has been pushing, all in aid of preserving Guyana's rich and diverse culture. Ultimately, it is intended that the National Dance, the Music School, and the Theatre School would be brought under one umbrella and there would be the Institute of Creative Arts, a happening at the National Cultural Center. Over the years, lots of plays would have been done, lots would have been written about, and maybe it might be an interesting thing if we can go back and find the very first play that was done and maybe recreate it, um, you know, as some gesture to the legacy of plays that you've had here in Guyana. Uh, over the years as well, I know the Culture Center would have collected a lot of plays by the various producers who would have done plays here, and that's an immense collection. And again, we need to take that cultural wealth, put it together, and maybe with the, the writer's permission and so forth, to compile them so we have lots of rich material to work with. Courses offered are acting, voice, movement, English language and literature, lights, sound, directing and the history of theater, script writing and costume and creativeness, makeup for theater, business of theater, introduction to theater and set design and stage craft and management. And with that, we've come to the end of this week's edition of the Weekly Digest. But before we go, here's a recap of the headlines. Home Affairs Ministry to aggressively implement security reforms. Police officers receive scientific and technical skills training. And low-income earners to benefit from 7% reduction in pink prices. Remember that the Weekly Digest and all the government information can be found on our website, www.gina.gov.gy. You may send us your comments and suggestions at gina at gina.gov.gy. Thank you for having us in your homes. Join us next week as we highlight more about documentation for you. Cheers to a productive week. I am Sula Finley-Williams.